Well, hello, and welcome to the Recruiter of Oz podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Smith, and I am joined by my co-host, Mark Tortorisi. I am Mark Tortorisi. It is good good to see you. Let's start the day off with a pun. (laughs) Hello. Well, people, we've talked about a lot of things so far, and, and, and today for this episode, I was a little bit stumped when Mark proposed the topic, and I'm looking at it, I'm going, okay, reactive versus proactive job searching. Now, I know in many industries, we each have our version of being reactive and being proactive. Communications in my my situation is no different, but I was really stumped looking at this. So I, I, I kind of dug into this a little bit with Mark, and I think it, it might be interesting for you to hear, if you equally are stumped like myself, <laughs> what reactive versus proactive job searching is. So Mark, uh, without further delay, what the hell is reactive and what is proactive job searching? I think you can boil it down to getting concert tickets for like your favorite band. Ah, so, Taylor Swift. No, just kidding. So let's say, let's say it's like, you know, you know, mid mid eighties and you've got to get tickets for like show that you want to see, like, you know, that's the best you could do being from the mid eighties. <laughs> A show you want to see. Well, let's say uh, Def Leppard or The Cure. Right. So we'll say Def Leppard or The Cure. But you know there are tickets that are available, but instead you just wait for them to become released and then hope that you get like a seat or any seat, any good seat. That's uh-huh. kind of like reactive. Now, proactive is you going out, connecting with people to find the person who actually has bought the tickets ahead of time. Maybe they're known as ticket scalpers, whatever, (laughs) but that's being proactive. And you go and find the people who have the tickets, you find the people who have the best ones, and then you work out your deal. Okay. So is that analogy really, (laughs) I'm I'm questioning the analogy. So (laughs) I got what you need, man. I I got what you need. So here's your ticket. Yeah, maybe not the the maybe not the language is the same, but the the actions are definitely the same. You're 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 taking the initiative to go out and and get it. Okay, so I kind of understand that, but why don't you parlay that into a real world scenario mm-hmm. in in a job search situation? Yeah, so so I think one thing first is kind of establish like what actually happens once a role is posted publicly. Like if you're just a a, a candidate and then all of a sudden a role pops up on the company website or on LinkedIn. What does that actually mean? Well, that means that a whole lot more people than you have access to it and everybody and their mother can apply for it. That's right. But a couple of things have already happened before that job has been posted. Let me tell you what they are. Okay. Um, The company has most likely already looked into hiring internally. And Mm -hmm. in fact, they may have some candidates internally for that role already yeah. in process because companies do have their own like internal mobility, internal hiring. And so that could be already happening before that role is even posted. Right. Um, the company actually might have somebody in mind already externally. So they might actually have like their perfect candidate in mind and really the job release the the posting of this job is just a formality. Right. So the reason why they do that is because there isn't like a specific number, but companies are contractually complied to have a job role open. And it depends from company to company. It could be like three days, three working days, could Mm -hmm. be like 10 working days, whatever it is, they have like a policy that they have to have for a role to be open. Okay. So I've been at companies where it was like, it had to be like a week. Um, Mm -hmm. The last company I was at had to be like, you know, like three or four days. Like it just depends on the company. But they may just have it open for that long, even though they have the candidate already that they really want. And maybe they have that candidate because that candidate was a friend of a friend, a referral, somebody who just happened to reach out to the hiring manager at the right time and made that connection. So all this stuff could happen without you even knowing it. All you see is like, hey, there's a new job that just got posted. I'm going to apply. Right. When, when. All this other stuff has already happened. So I have a quick question that is going to deviate a little bit from this topic, but it's just a quick aside. Why is a company compelled to make a public posting for a job? Why can't they just hire confidentially? 
Right. So they're, they're technically, I mean, I, I just looked this up, at least for California. I haven't looked it up for like all other states, mm-hmm. but um, there are in California, they, I don't think there is like an actual like legal reason. Um, you talk for a second here. I'll bring up the, the actual, the actual posting on the e, um, the state government website. Um, okay. You know, I, I good throw it to Scott to talk when I'm waiting on an answer. That's fine. But no, I, I I'm often curious about that. And I find myself coming into a situation where, um, I, I may be part of a confidential job, um, application process. And I'm just kind of curious, you know, so what does that mean? And what happens? I mean, my, my, my paranoid side comes out and says, all right. So they, if they pick me for this role, but then they have to, um, to observe a process, which means we post something in a newspaper, we post an ad on LinkedIn. What happens when, you know, a whole bunch of people apply for those roles? Do they actually look at the new applications coming in? Is that also something that they do? Or do they throw them into the, the electronic circular file right away? Yeah. So, I mean, I can't find the, uh, the post that stated about the days. I mean, all I can find now is the, um, um, the stuff about pay. So basically if a company has 15 or more employees, then they have to post the, um, the pay for the job. Okay. But I'll, I can, I can find the link though for, um, the amount of days that has to be up and how it doesn't actually, there isn't like an actual set number yeah. of days. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure somebody out there in HR is going to correct me on this, but I will, I will find it and I'll, I'll post it. It's, it's off of the state website. Okay, cool. Um, so basically yeah. the, once that job gets posted though, mm-hmm. you're kind of behind the eight ball in terms of like your place in the application line at best, you're on the same level field as the level playing field as the other candidates. But still, all these other right. things could have happened beforehand, right? Internal mm-hmm. reviews, a candidate that maybe proactively reached out to a hiring manager, and then they realized, hey, you know what? We want this candidate. Okay, well, let's write up a job posting. Let's post it yeah. and then take it down. And there may be people who apply during that time that it's posted. It gets taken down, and then mm-hmm. they hire the person that they had in hand anyways, so what happens with those those other people who applied though? I mean, do they actually they, get considered, they, or what 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 is the situation there? They they I mean they they might get interviewed. And may, mm-hmm. I'd say more than likely they probably get the the nice automated rejection. Thanks. We've already chosen someone. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm I'm curious from your experience, and I don't necessarily know that this would hit you at, at where you're at and what you do. But do you have an estimate of kind of what percentage of, of positions that are posted are actually falling in that category where they've already picked someone, whether it be external or internal, and, and they're just posting it as a formality? Yeah. I mean, it depends on the role because because there are plenty of roles out there that are like your your bucket roles. <clears throat> and so I th- I'm, I'm guessing everyone in the audience knows what that means. Like basically roles I don't. Where- Okay. A bucket roll? What's a bucket roll? <laughs> so basically a, a role where you need like a lot of the same type of person. Ah. So like a, a bucket roll would not be, hey, I need to get a um, director of communications for my company. You don't need like 20 of those. Right. So it's that's like a, a unique like job posting. Whereas like a bucket roll would be somebody like we need a bunch of software engineers who are going to develop stuff in like Go or Golang or Python for like a specific cloud-based oh, application. Okay. Okay. You don't just need one of them. You need like a, uh, like, you know, 10 or, or whatever it is. Like, or you might need even need like a steady stream of them, right? Just okay. depending on the, the scrutiny they're going to have in the hiring process. So those are bucket ones. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. So the, the ones though, in terms of like companies that post job postings and they already have somebody in mind, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think it happens like as often as you might think. I mean, they, they have people in mind, but even think about the most executive kind of like searches that are out there. Mm-hmm. They, they want to hire the best person. So if they're looking right. for like a new chief product officer, they're going to get, you know, reach into their executive search group or they're going to, you know, contract out to an executive search firm and they're going to find the best one. And they're going to, for a role like that, they'll take the time. So the job might be posted um, or it might not be. 
mm-hmm. in terms of like an executive search. They might actually just not post it, but they're going to start the search knowing very well that that search is going to take anywhere from six months to a year. Yeah. Okay. So it really depends on the role for sure. What about a confidential situation where the company is, is, is looking to keep it under wraps? What, then what happens the job there? won't be posted. And so that'll be one of the okay. ones where like you just happen to network with the right person at a company, mm-hmm. or you happen to know somebody at a company that's like, Hey, you know what? This role is going to be open. It's not open right now. It's a confidential search, but we'd like to talk to you about it. Okay. Now that's not something that is, is, it, is that viewed as, as questionable um, or is that illegal or what, or is there? No, there's, co- there's confidential searches all the time at, okay. at companies. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. So I'm I'm just curious why the confidential search wouldn't fall to the same um, requirements as a regular job search. Well, because if it's let's say it's a confidential search and it's a, <clears throat> a replacement for somebody, then well, you can't post it because the person who actually has the job is going to see it and they're going to be like, hey, "Oh, yeah, that's that, my that job." Makes sense. Okay. Right? So. Yeah. I'm asking these questions, people, so you don't have to. I'm taking one for the team. So just let <laughs> you know. I'm asking the difficult questions here. Well, not necessarily difficult questions. I'm asking the, dude, really, Scott, did you ask that question? <laughs> but really, in, in secret, you're in mind, you're going, oh, thank goodness, because I was really wondering about that myself. Yeah. So yeah. what does all this mean in terms of like reactive job search versus proactive? What it means is there's certain ways that you can approach your job search that's not just like, okay, I applied to the company and now I'm just going to wait to see what they say. Right. Right. That's being just reactive. So I guess a quick review. um, What does it mean when you're doing um, reactive versus like more of like proactive, or I guess the right word might be strategic job searching. Uh, yes. reactive would be just applying to the job and waiting for something to happen, which that's, that's putting your odds very low of something good happening. I mean, it right, could happen, right. but the odds are lower now sure. strategic or, you know, uh, strategic kind of job searching would be something more related to applying for a job, but then reaching out to your network to talk to people who work at the company mm-hmm. and get the inside scoop for that particular role. Right. And what if you don't know anybody who works at the company? Good question. What what if you don't know anybody that works <laughs> at the company, Mark? Then you conduct searches on like LinkedIn or wherever and find people who work there that are related to the role. Either you find the hiring manager for the role or you find like sourcers and recruiters who work for the company and connect with them. You know that's a good that's a good uh, suggestion. I'm kind of having this this idea, entrepreneurial idea, where <laughs> we become internet job search detectives, and and for people who are too lazy to get out there and try to dig into this information, we do it for a fee. That for would be really cool. <laughs> I, I'm willing good. to give that a try. Well, but, here let's yeah. let's do that. Here, let's do your your first your first taste of of what that could look like here. Okay, wait, let me make sure that you can share your screen because for some reason with the you know platform oh, we're using, I, I have to totally, set that up. I am totally disabled. Are you? That's not good. Uh you can now oh, share now your I can, screen. I can now I can now do it. I am now fully enabled. Enabled. That that would be the antonym, I believe. All right. So here's what you do first. Step one, cry. And rock back and forth in your closet. No, no. With a thumb in your mouth and, and <laughs> no, just make it stop. Make it stop. Okay. So step one, start with the job rec, obviously. Mm-hmm. After applying, then target possible hiring managers for the group, the broader group, and or target the recruiters or sourcers who are filling the role. Make sense? Yes, it does. Really quick question. So let let's let's let me let me inject some more complexity here. Say you're <laughs> interviewing or you're interested, really interested in a job for a, you know a multi billion dollar company who has thousands or tens of thousands of employees. How right. can you find the right person for that? Because they're often multiple groups that are hiring, right? 
Yes. So there is, I do answer that. So I, I like kind of gave myself an easy out with this uh, example here. Okay. But I will tell you what to do if it is for like this 10,000 person company. So I chose one where it's only like a, a few hundred. So mm-hmm. this one was a little easier, but here's a company um, in uh, Seattle and they're mm-hmm. looking for a technical product marketing manager. So you look at the job, you're like, great, this is me. Mm -hmm. I want to work here. You apply and you do all that stuff. But after you do that, or maybe even before, I mean, depending on how fast you want to get your application in there, then Mm -hmm. you click on the company name or the logo. Either one will take you to where you need to go. Okay. And that will take you to the company page. And now you're on the company page and now you can get the insight that you need, like the actual number of employees, um, location, other job posts, all that information. So what I do is I then click on where it says the number of employees, because that's an actual link. And that'll bring you the the list of employees that work for the company? Exactly. And so now you're here. And so now you're like, okay, now I can do something. Looks like Sean's getting an email, huh? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So, well, maybe not. I mean, if I want him to go like, uh, yeah, I don't know. You got to talk to one of the recruiters. So you got to choose your, you got to choose your shot. Right. So what I'm going to do here first is if I want to find the recruiter or sourcer, then I might put in just a simple string. So recruiting, recruitment, sourcer, talent acquisition. Sometimes I just put talent because somebody might on their profile, they don't say like talent acquisition specialist. They might just say specialist comma talent. And that's it. Yeah. So it's up to you how you want to put in the search, but this is just one way of doing it. So you take, take that string and what I do is you can do the keywords, but sometimes if you do the keywords, you end up getting other people that are not necessarily in talent acquisition. So okay. sometimes I might actually go to the keyword section and I put it that string in the title. You're actually demonstrating this in LinkedIn. So you're saying that Boolean does indeed work in some areas of LinkedIn, huh? As long as you keep it short. Cool. You know, that's a whole other conversation, but... Right. Again, this is, and I actually show you how to do this in, in Google as well. So that you can do this several ways. So once you put that in there and you've put it um, in the keyword section in the title, then you search and now you've got your results. Super cool. Okay. And so now I can decide, okay, who am I going to um, talk to? I'm, I might. I mean, it's it's up to you if you want to bug the VP of talent, or you can actually talk to like maybe one of the recruiters who are hiring for the roles. Okay. Okay, cool. Interesting. (laughs) I'm having like this flashback to that ZocDoc commercial that just came out where the woman's trying to find a doctor and she's looking through pictures and she's saying, too old, too young, medium, too medium, just right. So that's what we do here. Um, I, I'm not going to even, I'm not going to attribute those, um, you know, adjectives to anyone here, but just saying. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> so, so let's say you want to find actually the hiring manager or the hiring leader. Well, mm-hmm. then you're not going to do those recruiting keywords. You're actually going to put in like stuff like technical marketing, product marketing. You might do VP of marketing. You might do marketing director. Like you might, whatever words you think might lead you to that person you put in your search. Now, luckily okay. this being like a 350 person company, you don't yeah. have to do, you don't have to do much. So when I put in just those few words there, I mean, I have a short list of 34 people and now I can say, okay, well, I can talk to the VP of product marketing or the director. Maybe I'll reach out to the director and then start my, my spiel. Okay. Question for you then. So if you're in a situation like this and trying to make up your mind, whether to reach out to recruiting talent acquisition or the hiring manager for the role, which is the best route to go. And for you, I guess that's kind of one of the same, but if if you're uh, a technical discipline or if you're comps discipline or something like that, is it better to reach out to someone who might be the hiring manager or It, it could be because it depends like what you have in common with that hiring manager or what, uh, the work that you have in the type of work that you have in common with what that hiring manager does. Okay. So like somebody who's like, a, in other words, like if you are an engineer and you're very good at your craft and like whatever discipline it is, and you're connecting with the hiring manager who also is good at their craft, mm-hmm. there's much more of a connection there than maybe you reaching out to a recruiter and then 
trying to make it happen there. For one, the recruiter okay. might not even understand how good you are. If they're a good recruiter, then they would. But if they're not so good, that you they you could just be another fly in their ear um, in terms right. of like you know all, all the buzzing. So in that case, reaching out to the hiring manager could work for you. And then the hiring manager, once they establish that relationship, will then direct you to the recruiter anyways. But at least mm-hmm. you, they'll have that kind of like buy-in with the hiring manager. Gotcha. I would be curious, even though this is probably nowhere, anywhere available, uh, but do you have any estimate, Mark? Uh, (laughs) What percentage of job seekers actually employ this technique? Uh, I know it's impossible to answer. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if they're like, maybe like sources and recruiters, maybe they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Actually, you know, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if a lot of people do this. I think we'll have to wait for our audience to tell us if they do this or not. That's an interesting question that we should pose. Yeah. Do you employ this type of search technique when looking for a job? And and side note, though, Mark, I mean, in, in situations like this, I think in my search, I'm doing both. And I'm doing less of this, admittedly, but I'm going to start doing more of this. I have a lot of contacts and a lot of companies that I'll reach out to, but... Um, y- you don't do this for every role you're applying for, I would assume, because obviously there are some roles that are kind of filler. And if you got them, great, that's cool. And I, I hate to say it and make it sound like crash like that, but yeah, you know, I'll throw my resume out to certain things that may or may not be exactly what I'm looking for. Most likely they're not. Um, and I don't put the effort into those that I do in something that is super compelling. Yeah. Which you wish for something that is compelling, then you, you would probably go all out mm-hmm. like this. Now, right. If you are adverse to using the search in LinkedIn, because the search in LinkedIn is not that good, I will, I will, I will let you know that, or I've, I've let you know that a bunch of times. Then you can do the same thing, but just do it in Google. So here is right. a string doing the same thing in Google. Uh, in this case, I was using the recruiter example, but you could see I'm using, and we talked about this in our, I can't remember which episode it was, but in our our job search tips uh, mm-hmm. episode. And so this is a Google search string. You use the site operator and then www.linkedin.com slash in. Mm-hmm. And then in anchor, which we'll use for the company. And then for who we're looking for, you use the in title operator, which will find those keywords in the title of mm-hmm. the web page. Okay. Now, let's say that it was actually, let's say this company was not like under 500 people. Let's say it was like 10,000. If it was 10,000, yeah. then going to look for all of these recruiters would be a mess. You would get yeah. everybody. So instead, if you were looking, let's say this company was like 10,000 people, well, then you would add in a separate set of keywords. You would put in like the company, you would do the titles, but then you'd do, you would do a separate set of keywords that kind of okay. lets you know which types of roles the recruiter is looking at. And so for something like, product marketing or technical marketing, then I might throw in things like, you know, GNA or marketing or sales. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a recruiter would say, yeah, I'm I'm recruiting non-tech roles. Like, I mean, it's just whatever the words that they might use, we're just trying to get to that type of recruiter for that particular role. Interesting. Okay. That makes sense. But then how many, I mean, there's still a huge sample though. I mean, if you're, I'm, I'm thinking of a company like, you know, say Cisco or an HP where you're up at 80,000 employees, you know, FTEs, you know, how do you weed that out? I mean, you've got multiple lines of business. You, I mean, this is what you're doing right here, obviously the GNA or the marketing or sales. Yeah. Um, how, yeah. how, how, how accurate is that? I mean, does it still get you to where you want to be in a situation like that? It can. I mean, you might have to, so like, for instance, let's say, it was for Cisco, but it was specifically for like, like cloud, you know, cloud, you know, cloud software engineers for, yeah. for networking. Well, then you might put in, you know, the recruiter keywords, then you put in something related to like cloud and software development. Okay. And that makes sense. Comes up. Yeah. And so when you do this search, then you kind of get your results like this. So it does work. Mm-hmm. You just have to um, decide which route you want to go. Okay. So, yeah, that's kind of like one example um, that you can use to track down 
and do your job search like a little more strategic, I guess. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm almost worried about putting these these podcast episodes out you know, <laughs> until I've actually got a chance to try these and utilize them. But you know, that's fine. <laughs> We're here for you, the listeners. Um, and you know, if we have to lose out on a job because one of our <laughs> listeners, you know, got the creative urge to employ some of these techniques, well then you know what? More power to you, and we're really thrilled for you. Rock and roll. Cool. Exactly. Well, that's pretty now, neat. Yeah. So now that's like more of like your strategic job searching. Now I want to talk to you about proactive job searching. Now this is different. With okay. proactive job searching, there is no job posting. Right. There is no spoon. Ooh. So basically what proactive networking refers to then is you identify a list of companies that you want to work areas of interest that like that align with yours that, you know, these companies have, whether it's like they work on products that you want to work on. They yeah. have a, a company culture that you like, whatever it is, but you have like your whole list of companies that you want to target. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you network with people at those companies and it could be recruiters. It could be hiring managers it might probably more likely be, hiring managers, I would say. And okay. the way that you identify these companies uh, in terms of like, are they ready to, to be networked with? Cause like you don't mm -hmm. just want to network with a company and they've like maybe done a bunch of layoffs recently because right. you know, you're going to be waiting a while. So instead you want to identify companies of interest that have recently posted like market reports that are favorable like they're experiencing growth in a market because if they're experiencing growth in a market, that means they're going to be hiring more for that particular division. Right. Or maybe, right. or maybe companies that have posted new mergers and acquisitions, they just acquired a company and they need to grow in that particular space. Sure. Sure. Um, companies that maybe posted uh, about a new product launch mm -hmm. or sales growth or companies that maybe just got a huge round of VC funding. Like mm -hmm. all of that means they're going to be hiring. Uh, maybe okay. they're getting into a new disruptive technology. They're expanding a certain area for their business. Mm -hmm. All that means growth, which means hiring. So right. you identify those companies based on like, you know, tech reports, news reports, wherever you get your tech news. And then you network to the hiring managers for those specific areas of specialty. And then you introduce yourself, your, you know, what you do. And then interest in future roles, knowing right. that there's not a role that's posted. But once you do that with like a hiring manager, you've now put yourself in the forefront of their mind to set yourself up sure. for being looked at in the future when a role becomes like available or even when they start to think about creating a role. This is what is known as the long game. This is definitely the long game. Indeed. <laughs> Are, are there other ways you can do that with the hiring manager? I mean, be a little less um, intrusive in terms of, hey, reaching out and saying, well, you know, this is really interesting to me and I, I'd, I'd be interested in being considered for any future roles. What about if if the hiring manager is is posting articles and, and, and things from the company Definitely. as well? Can, I mean, can you approach it like uh, being an active commenter on those posts or whatnot? Is that going to, to be effective as well in that kind of situation or very much. So that's like something that you should do like pretty much all the time anyways, mm -hmm. but that's like your social, that's your social media engagement, which I don't think we've right. talked about a lot, but that's like, no. that's like a huge piece of it. Basically being like being in the mix in every conversation, whether it's like about the company or about the, the material that the, the hiring manager has posted, right. you're there commenting. The hiring manager will see people who are commenting on it. They'll also see people who are adding value to the right. conversation. So not only are you like posting and liking stuff, but you're also adding value to the, the conversation. That's important. Right. That makes total sense. Yeah. So definitely do that with like everything. <laughs> I mean, that could be a full-time job in and of itself right there. It, it is for sure. Yeah. I mean, the, wow. so social media marketing managers, right? Yeah, I, I I totally agree. I mean, fortunately, I'm not a social media marketing manager, but you know, <laughs> I can feign stupidity, right? Ignorance. <laughs> Sorry, not stupidity. Ignorance. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it. You know, I was all happy with with having my my job bucketed out, like we've spoken about in the last 
few episodes, you know, basically taking your time, making sure that you're you're leaving time to do other things that aren't focused on the job. But by doing things like this, this this adds time to my job search. But it sounds yeah. like it could pay dividends too, though. Yeah, it's really more of like kind of like sowing little like sowing little social marketing seeds. Yes. <laughs> Super cool. Is there yeah. anything that you haven't discussed here about this? I mean, I think this is really interesting and it it, it now adds a new term to my, my bucket list of reactive <laughs> versus proactive terms. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think I would, I would try. I mean, it's, it's, you've got to do something that's going to set you above the normal applicant, the reactive applicant. So right. These are the things to do that. So you, you can't just you can't just like apply to the job and then, then say, okay, world, entertain me, right? Because right. that's but that, that's, that's what a lot of us are doing at this point. I mean, you know, it, it it really messed with my worldview of job searching when you told me, yeah, don't really bother with the cover letter. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm sitting here going, Yeah, that's an interesting job. Bing, 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 bing. And I noticed that each one of them say, yeah, cover letter, but they don't have the little red asterisk. Exactly. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to try this. And the funny thing is, I've gotten more responses with no cover letter than I have with cover letter. Yeah. I so mean, now, yeah. you could think of your LinkedIn profile as intro as kind of like your your cover letter. I mean, well, then I need to start putting things like, like long walks on the beach and playing drums <laughs> and you know, fine scotches and bourbons and things fine like scotch. this. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe that's not as, as relevant as I'd like it to be. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not to the job. <laughs> right. Cool. <laughs> well, this has been super helpful and I think we're going to be a shorter episode today, but it's something that I really needed to know about. And, and I think that a lot of our listeners will probably appreciate this as well. Mark, do you have any final comments on this? Yeah, no, just the competition is fierce. You know, when a, a job comes out, it's especially true right now. The market right. is crazy. So you've got to take as many avenues as possible to kind of get a leg up on the competition. So this is just a, a, another way to do it. Sage advice again from <laughs> Mr. Tortorisi. So that will conclude this episode of the Recruiter of Oz podcast. Please like and subscribe to us. And, uh, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to my email at scott at arphilic.com. I haven't been doing that one the last couple of episodes, but it's scott at arphilic.com. And we'll be happy to address on air. We've got a couple uh, in the backlog right now that we will address in future episodes, but uh, definitely want to hear from you. So thanks for joining us this week. We look forward to uh, seeing you on the next episode. Take care. Thanks, everyone.